<laughs> How does personal truth differ from God's truth? Well, obviously, just like personal truth has characteristics and attributes, so too does God's truth have characteristics and attributes. So what we can do is we can go through and discuss the attributes of personal truth or what seemingly are the attributes of personal truth and contrast them with some of these attributes and characteristics of God's truth. So I thought maybe uh, I've listed there for you some attributes of God's truth. So maybe if you could list the attributes of God's truth and then we can have a discussion about what personal truth looks like in comparison to that oftentimes. Great. Okay. So one of the aspects of God's truth is that it's God's knowledge and it's absolute fact. Yes, as we've already mentioned. Personal truth is my personal knowledge and therefore not absolute fact. It's just my personal opinion. (laughs) Okay, God's truth is God's experience and the sum total of all experiences of all of God's creatures. Yes, whereas my personal truth is my own experience and nobody else's. (laughs) <laughs> generally. I have the ability, of course, to examining other people's experiences and learning from those. But most people don't do that very well. Most people look at everybody else's experience and go, that's them. If I do the same thing, it would be different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it turns out the same. And uh, you know, we often do that. So we're often ignorant of the fact that uh, of even examining other people's personal experiences. Yeah. Great. Mm. Okay. God's truth is what what universally actually is. Yes. Uh, My truth is what only is for me (laughs) and not has, it doesn't have any uh, impact upon what universally is. So do you mean by that it's what I want to believe? Yes, it's what I want to believe or what's happened to me, not what actually is. See, often what I, what I interpret happened for me is very different from what God's viewpoint is of what actually happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, God's truth expands personal life. Mm -hmm. Personal truth usually contracts it. Usually what happens is that once we start to believe certain things ourselves, our life becomes smaller because we have all these fears that we engage and it's sort of like a prison that we, of our own making that we create. Whereas God's truth, as you pointed out, expands in its nature. It causes us to be free of the bars. Mm -hmm. You know, we have freedom instead. Yeah. And that's probably the next one we could talk Mm. about, that God's truth results in freedom. Yes, whereas personal truth results in slavery, (laughs) literally, oftentimes, but also figurative from an emotional perspective. We're often enslaved to our concepts and ideas and beliefs that limit and severely limit our life and the lives of people around us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So if you look at personal truth regarding religion, it has resulted in religious concepts that, that have been enslaved humanity for centuries and sometimes millennia. And sometimes we haven't gotten out of it without having a revolution. <laughs> where Scientific truth has been rejected over and over again by religion. So, so this is an example of how personal truth has enslaved humanity, right down to large groups of people being enslaved. Mm. Mm. So God's truth is only pleasurable and is always in harmony with universal truth. Yes. So, so our personal truth, often painful. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, once we come to see what's going on with ourselves, what we believed to be true in the past, and then it's exposed, God's truth exposes something, we then feel the pain of it then. We also don't understand that, but, but a lot of our pain that we have right now is because we are holding on to our personal truth mm-hmm. rather than God's. So we don't understand that even our experience right now is painful because of our holding on to personal opinions that are not true. Mm. Mm. And I suppose all the way through this, you're speaking about personal truth when it's out of alignment with God's truth. Yes. Obviously, a person can bring their personal truth into harmony with God's truth, but I wouldn't call that personal truth anymore. That's just me living in harmony with God's truth, what I now know to be God's truth. And I can't call it my truth because God created it. (laughs) It's God's truth. So I don't see their... uh, Every form of personal truth I see as an error because once we bring ourselves into harmony with God's truth, we've now brought ourselves into God's truth, not into personal truth. So we are personally now living God's truth. 
yeah. if you like, yeah. which means we're personally living in God's reality. We're actually now living in the reality of the universe rather than the imaginary universe we created through our personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> which is an amazing thing to consider, isn't it? To exactly. Live, to live in the real world? What does it mean to live in the real yeah, world? Yeah, exactly. No, no, people think this is the real world. <laughs> this isn't the real world. This is the world of our the, that is the figment of our imagination that we've created as a personal reality, but it's not God's reality. God's reality is that if we lived in harmony with all of God's truth, we'd have a very different world, you know, mm -hmm. a very different mm -hmm. life and a very different being, a very different personal feelings, a very different joy yeah. that we currently have, collectively and individually. Mm. Mm. Okay, so moving on. Yeah. God's truth... With God's truth, there is always more to learn. Yes. So because God's infinite in nature, God's universe is infinite in nature, ever expanding. And or, when I say that, I mean the multidimensional universes. There are more and more of them being created. So therefore, the universe is ever expanding. As a result of that, there's more to learn. There's more truth to know. As a result of that, it's going to be limitless. Human truth is completely the opposite. That, you know, we want to believe that all of the truths about God are contained in the Bible. For the average Christian wants to believe that. The average Muslim, of course, wants to believe they're contained within the... Uh, Quran. Yeah, Quran, you know. And, and the average other person wants to believe all sorts of things. You know, the average atheist wants to believe that it's in creation. But the reality is that these personal truths are all in error, in fact. So personal truth leads us to feel that there's no more to learn. Exactly. It causes us to believe that we have nothing more to know on a certain subject. I once read a scientific journal a few years ago which said this scientist postulated this idea or concept that he believed that mankind had discovered all of the scientific facts or the majority of the scientific facts that we were ever going to discover. And I'm going... What? How could you believe such a thing? We've barely scraped the surface of what we can discover and yet somebody wants to believe we've discovered everything. This is how limiting personal truth is. Yeah. This belief that we already know and it's really arrogance. You know, it's really an emotion of arrogance. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. With God's truth, there is no compromise ever. Exactly. <laughs> personal truth compromises all the time. It's like... Depending on the situation, you know, if, like, if, if I'm talking to my wife, I'm in a different situation than if I'm talking to my mates down the pub. And that's a different situation than I'm talking to my children. So, so like, this is three conversations that I might have in the same day about the same thing. My child comes up and says, Daddy, are you going to leave Mummy? No, 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 son, I'm not going to leave Mummy. No, we're going to stay together and you're going to have a happy life, you know. Next conversation with his wife. I'm going to leave you. Every, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to. So now he's compromised, right? What he would lose. He goes down to mates and he says, "Oh, my wife, she's terrible." <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, there's all sorts of things that happen in the course of a day where somebody just compromises the truth. Mm -hmm. They don't say the same thing to their child, the same thing to their wife, the same thing to their mates, the same thing at work, the same thing at school, the same thing, you know, in, in their social life, the same thing like to their family, the same thing to their friends, <laughs> mm -hmm. because they compromise on every issue. Now, why do they compromise on every issue? Because there's an emotional reason why in every case. There's an emotional fear present in every case. Mm -hmm. God's truth doesn't do that. Yeah. God's truth doesn't compromise with anybody, with anything, <laughs> ever. Yeah. Eternally. <laughs> uh, God's truth always acts in harmony with God's love. Yes, and this is something I feel most people don't understand too, too, is that truth and love are like brothers, you Buddies. know, yeah. they're, they're hand in hand. And without truth, love can't exist. And without love, truth really can't exist either. And so um, from God's, the, the beauty of, of universal truth is that it is always in harmony with God's definition of love as well. It's always based on love. Now, if you look at uh, human condition, we can often yell and sc scream and pull somebody down telling them the truth. Now, God doesn't do that. Mm. God is not trying to destroy us while God's telling us the truth. God's trying to expose things to us to help us. There's a different, whole different attitude from God 
than there is from humanity with regard to truth. So often people's personal truth is wanting to tear down, destroy, rebel, and all of those kind of things, which are all anti-love. Mm. And so they have very, very different quality to them than what God's truth has. Mm. Okay. God's truth seeks full resolution. Yes, this is something about God that most people and God's universe that most people don't understand and that God wants to share the truth to us to the complete degree. In other words, God wants us to discover everything there is to know. And God knows that God's created an infinite universe, of course, so God knows that we won't fully discover everything, but God wants us to. There's a different attitude. There's a door open. There's a door open constantly to discover yeah. more. Yeah. With people on earth, it's very, very different. With people with their personal truth, they're often very closed about what they want you to discover. So they'll tell you one thing, won't tell you another. They'll, they'll, op they'll openly disclose some things when they know it's in their best interest, but if it's in somebody else's interest and not their own, they won't tell you. Mm -hmm. So this is the compromise that people make frequently. They don't want to share everything mm -hmm. they only want to share what's in their own interest right. and I suppose some people um, fear conflict don't they so they feel that um, they that they are going to um, create conflict by sharing more so they seek peace rather than yes. than resolving things really. exactly so so God's truth is such that like in the case of a husband and wife for example God's truth is God wants the husband and wife to resolve all of their problems and get to a point where their love their love binds them without any problems without any pain and suffering humanity in the same situation often goes okay I'll tolerate a certain amount of pain and suffering because I don't really want to take this to full resolution. Mm -hmm. right? This is a problem with us on earth. We, our, our personal truth dictates that there's cert, we, we realise that if we take it to full resolution, that might mean leaving. Yeah. Or we take it to full resolution, and that mean, might, might mean I have to change on something I don't want to change on. So, so what do I decide to do? I decide to not take it to full resolution. God's truth never does that. Yeah. God's truth is always wanting to go to full resolution of the problem. It's such a loving provision, isn't it? Of course, yeah. 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 Okay, God's truth never controls or forces others. Yes. So the beauty of God's truth is it has this characteristic that it's never going to force you to come to that truth. It's waiting for you to develop a desire to discover it. It's not going to, through any form of punishment, through any form of destruction or control, through any form of manipulation, try to get you to have that opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, if you contrast that with the average religion on the planet, you can see there's a huge difference between what God's truth does and what their truth does. From a humanities perspective, from a personal truth perspective, most of the time, a person who has a certain belief or a certain opinion wants to force that opinion on another. Mm -hmm. They want to make the other person have the same opinion. They'll even manipulate the other person into the same opinion. They'll even falsify information in order that the other person has the same opinion, not realising that it's not a real opinion. Yeah. And, and they'll do all sorts of things in order to get somebody else to believe the same thing. Historically, religions have gone on crusades to force whole populations to believe the same thing. Yeah. That's how strongly invested we are emotionally in walking away from God's truth. Now, God's, God has this beautiful feeling towards all of humanity, this gift of free will, which, and this gift says, I am not going to force you to recognise my truth. So God's really, who, God who knows all truth doesn't force any of us to know that truth. Now, if we were copying that, we would never have a war about truth. We would never have a war about personal opinion. We'd never have a war about anything, probably, <laughs> if we just copied that one thing, right? Because we wouldn't be trying to force another person to do anything. Yeah. Uh, whereas, and that's what God's truth does. It doesn't force another person to do anything. Mm. Mm. Even our interpersonal <coughs> discussions would have a lot less emotional charge to them, wouldn't they? Of course. 
Yeah. yeah. We wouldn't be arguing and fighting and bickering and because we'd realise that every single opinion that I hold right now, unless it's been a full personal experience, I know for certain that it can't be certain. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I know for certain, yeah. that it's not certain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that it's not, it's not yet val validated by the experience of knowing everything about my personal experience. Yeah. In other words, it's not yet validated by knowing God's truth about yeah. my experience. Yeah. 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 Okay, God's truth can never be modified mm -hmm. even if no one accepts it. <laughs> yes, this is a beautiful thing about God's truth too, is that there there are things right now that not a single person in the universe in which God's created knows. But that doesn't change the fact that those things are true. Just because one person doesn't know it doesn't mean that it's not true. And just because a million people think they know something, it doesn't mean it isn't true. It doesn't mean it's it false. Is. <laughs> yep. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like this is the beautiful thing about God's truth. Because it's so fixed and immovable, it doesn't matter how many people believe it to be wrong, it's still going to be right. And it doesn't matter how many people believe it's right. It's still going to be right. Yeah. It doesn't matter if nobody believes it's right. It's still going to be right because that's the nature of it. Mm -hmm. The nature of it is it exists as truth whether we know it as, not, as truth or not. Humanity is going to discover things in the future, even in the near future, that they never knew before. Never. And they'll go, oh, isn't this amazing? It's a miracle <laughs> or whatever it is. It won't be any of those things. It will be just another one of God's truths mm. that they didn't know beforehand. So if we contrast that with personal truth, mm. how does that differ? Well, with personal truth, what we often see occurring is that people um, are, well, if you, look at, if you look at the situation with most, most people, they have this underlying belief that it's so... Okay it's okay to have all of these different opinions and that, and that if, if more than one person believes it, then it's highly likely it's true. And if nobody believes it yet, then it's highly likely it's false. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's very much governed by whether other people agree. And all that is is fear of disagreement, <laughs> fear of disapproval that causes us to have that opinion. And, but on this planet, it's very, very popular. You, you, know, you see it happening all around the world at different times. Whole nations act upon what is error because a whole lot of them collectively believe that it's true, not because if they've personally analysed it and know that it's true, but because everybody else does. Mm. They do it because everybody else agrees. And a lot of times people go along with things that everybody else agrees to, but it, that if they sat down and thought about it, they wouldn't personally agree. And the only reason why they're going along with it is because they're willing to compromise God's truth because they're afraid. Mm. So it's very frequent that that occurs. So personal truth's often modified to make it more acceptable to others. Usually modified. Yeah. So I see this happening a lot in discussions with people. You know, like the power of God's truth is that it's not modified. So you say it as it is. This is how it is. It, you can't modify it because it's how it is. But people want to embellish it somehow. They, they think that by embellishing God's truth, you're somehow going to make it more palatable or, or more able to be you know, heard by the listener. That's not true. It makes it less able to be heard by the listener. Mm. It mm. makes it less powerful. Every time you modify God's truth and try to turn it into something that it's not, you're making it harder for the person because it's like getting the torch and turning it off. <laughs> that's yeah. the problem with it. Yeah. Remember, if you think of the torch as that's God's truth and, you know, turning it off is what we do. With, with truth. that personal truth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. God's truth acts courageously. Yes. Yeah, so, so God's truth always stands by itself. It doesn't compromise with regard to itself. If we look at personal truth, it often compromises. It often is, has cowardice associated with it. In other words, we believe something to be true, but when there's a person wanting to kill us because of it, we go, no, it's not true anymore. 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah. We, we're more harmonious with fear in of that course. case. Yeah. And it's not even that severe most of the time. Most of the time it's if somebody doesn't like me because I'll change my mind. Yes. You know, it's, yeah, you don't even have to be threatened with death or anything. It's a lot of times just, you don't like me, I'll change my mind. <laughs> you know, that's the way it is for the majority of people on the planet when it comes to their personal truth. That they'll change their mind at the drop of a hat given how much pressure they're under. Yeah. 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 We've had that happen a lot, eh, where people have said to us, oh, we support what you're doing and everything. And then the instant we come under attack by the media or something else, they no longer support what we're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And nothing's changed from our perspective. No. It's just that they, they compromise, they, they have cowardice when it comes to truth. God's truth's not like that. Once God's truth is in your soul, you do not compromise like that. Mm. There, there's, no, there's always courage and, and it's fixed and immovable. Mm. You, you can't compromise on it because you know it's true for yeah. certain. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why we compromise on personal stuff because we don't know for certain that it's true. <laughs> That's the problem. Or we are governed by a lot of very fear-based emotions. Yeah. So even when we know it for certain is true, we're willing to compromise that because we're worried about what other people will do to us. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay. God's love feels only love for people who do not agree. Sorry, say so, that again. Sorry. God's truth sorry. feels only love yes. for people who do not agree with God's truth. Yes. So, so God's truth... Is the, the truth is that God's love is for all people. Therefore, it's even for people who don't believe in God, for people who don't believe in God's truth, God still loves. Mm -hmm. Humans' truth is very different to that. Most people only love the people who agree with them. Yeah. You know, you look at families, this even happens in families. So the family will only love you while you agree with the family based opinion. As soon as you disagree with the family-based opinion, they don't love you anymore. <laughs> you know, they act like they don't love you. They'll even hurt you. They'll even attack you because you don't do it. You know, you don't fit the mould. You, you see all these type of honour killings are like that. You know, that's an, that's an extreme example of how a family all of a sudden is willing to compromise love for the sake of a belief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is untrue. Mm. Right? God's love loves in all situations. Whether the person believes or not, whether the person understands or not, whether the person is angry, bitter, twisted, murderous, rapist, whatever, God's love loves in all situations. But, but personal truth, that's what God's truth does. Personal mm -hmm. truth doesn't do that generally. Mm -hmm. Personal mm -hmm. truth compromises in almost every situation for all different reasons. Mm. Mm. Okay, this, one's, this next one's interesting. God's truth rejoices in positive change. Yes. So what, the way God's constructed the universe is very interesting. And one of, the, one of the attributes of God's truth is whenever we shift and we absorb more God, of divine truth, we absorb more of God's truth, that causes a change within the individual. And so God's universe is constructed to change. Everything in the universe is changing at all times. Everything in the universe from a multi-dimensional uh, space is changing all the time. There's cons consistent creations of new dimensional existences all the time. God's truth it promotes change, positive change, mm -hmm. constructive change. Personal truth often causes a person to remain fixed and immo immovable with regard to change. They don't want to change. They want to sit in whatever it is they're sitting in <laughs> for the rest of their existence. They don't want to move or yeah. change their mind even. Yeah. You, see, you see people not even changing their mind, but you, don't see, you often see people not changing their lives. Their lives aren't growing. You know, on this earth we have this statement, you know, I'm too old to change. No, you're not ever too old to change. In fact, the older you get, the more you need to <laughs> change. In fact. If you're stuck in personal yeah, truth. Particularly if yeah. you're stuck in personal truth. And the, 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 this is a quality of personal truth, which is this fixed, I'm not going to change type attitude, whereas God's truth always has this flexibility to it in that I'm going to change to receive more truth. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to change to receive error. I'm going to change to receive more truth. And that change, because I'm receiving more truth, is always going to be positive mm. in its nature. Yeah. Mm. 
Okay, God's truth always acts in harmony with love. I think we've said that one. Mm -hmm. Or we, we talked about God's love, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. So God's truth always acts in harmony with love. Yeah. Is, is, is this, if we contrast that with human truth, human truth often doesn't act in harmony with love at all. <laughs> well, often doesn't act at all. Doesn't act at all sometimes, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, so, so we see often people just stay in complete stagnation, not acting at all. But if they do act, quite often they act completely out of harmony with love because they believe they're right. Mm -hmm. And when they believe they're right, when they're actually wrong, they're going to do an unloving thing. Yeah. And when they do the unloving thing, there's going to be pain and suffering that results. Yeah. Right? So this is the quality of personal truth is that we're often in this place where we're acting out of harmony with love. So you, and this is where I feel there's a huge problem from religious perspective, political perspective and other perspectives on the planet is we're constantly acting out of harmony with what is obviously love yeah. because we want to believe certain things and hold on to those beliefs. Yeah, mm. yeah. All right. God's truth is automatic. What does that mean? Well, because it exists as reality, it is automatic in the sense that it happens all the time. It's on autopilot all the time. This is the beauty of the laws of the universe is they are all acting all the time. Whether we know them or not, it's immaterial. It's automatic. Yeah. The whole system is automatic. When we look at the personal thing, we've got to do something generally, we take an action or whatever. The beauty of God's truth is it's automatically in process. Mm -hmm. And, and personal truth is not always automatically in process. Also, God's truth, once it's inside of us, it automatically motivates us down a certain course of action that we can't avoid because it's truth and we know it to be. Yeah. So we don't avoid it. Yeah. When we're in personal truth, it's not automatic to do good things. It's not automatic to grow. It's not automatic to change. When we're in personal truth, we often want to do the opposite of that. We often don't want to grow. We often don't want to be loving. We often don't want to change. Uh, and so when we haven't received God's truth into our souls, we're still in personal truth. And yeah. so even if we intellectually understand what might be loving, we have to practice that really hard. We have to practice it. We have to force ourselves to yeah. do it. It's yeah. not automatic. Yeah. Whereas if divine truth is actually in our soul, it's automatic. Yeah. We do it automatically. We yeah. don't do it because we have to try. We're automatically lo loving. So, so rather than me having to think about how am I going to love Mary today, <laughs> once I, I've got God's truth in my soul about as many subjects about love as I can get in my soul, I will automatically be doing it. I won't even have to think about it. It would just be an automatic... I'm, I'm doing things automatically that demonstrate to you that I love you without having to think about them. That's the beauty of God's truth. Yeah. With personal truth, we go, ah, oh, I know I should be truthful today. I know I should do this today. I know if I loved Mary, what, oh, I should do this, but I don't really feel like doing it. <laughs> That's how we feel when, sorry, when we're in personal truth. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, last one. God's truth is without judgment and is compassionate. Yes. So... If you think of God's truth as just the reality of existence, it doesn't have judgment either way. It doesn't say that's really, really bad. And it doesn't say that's really, really good. It just is what it is. That's God's truth. And because love is involved with it, it understands when somebody is out of harmony with it. It understands the truth of why they're out of harmony, but it still doesn't bend. Mm -hmm. It still is what it is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't judge the person out of harmony. Personal truth is usually the opposite of that. Personal truth, we usually go, you know, it is in judgment. Usually we go, that person's terrible. They shouldn't have done that, you know. The, and this is often why people can't experience emotions that cause them to stay in personal truth because they're so judged often. They feel so judged. But also they don't have a personal, person in this personal truth often isn't very compassionate, either with themselves or with other people. In other words, what they're trying to do frequently is punish a person or punish themselves for actions that are taken out of harmony with love. Now, if they were in harmony with God's truth, they wouldn't do that because God's truth doesn't do that. Mm. God's truth is what it is. It knows what it is. It is what it is. It doesn't judge a person either way. It just is what it is. If we bring ourselves into harmony with it, we will have happy life. 
if we don't live in harmony with it, we're going to have pain and suffering. That is what it is. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it is, it, is that it hasn't got the judgmental factors that we have. And I feel one of the main reasons why people on earth don't want to hear truth is because they're so afraid of being judged yeah. about not living in it yeah. or about you know, their own condition in comparison to it. And, uh, and that's a sad thing. That causes many people to resist divine truth as a result. Mm. 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 So if you look at all of those already, we've had a brief discussion, really. It's been yeah. a brief discussion. I know it might have lasted <laughs> 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so. But it's really a brief discussion about the comparisons between God's truth and personal truth. So what we probably want to do is, is look more deeply at these issues, yeah. which we will do in individual discussions, yeah. 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 in individual questions. Yeah, I feel that would be really beneficial. And to talk a lot more about what it means to actually receive God's truth and live God's truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 